in, in terms of trust, um, trusts are very complex. Um, and, and sometimes I think people ask for fairly simple answers, which obviously I'm, I'm, I'm not, not in a position to give. But in principle, a trust is if you put a property into a, a separate um, company um, uh, and you no longer have control over it. I think a lot of people think they've got this terribly clever way of dealing with trusts where they put it into a trust, the tax man can't get at it, but they sometimes have control of it, can get it back, etc. And I do know one of the questions, which we may be coming on to later, I saw that came in advance, was on exactly that issue. So I think the real issue is you have to accept that if you put it into a trust, if it's going to be tax efficient, you will effectively give up control. Now, there are elements of control and elements of tax, but that's the principle, I suppose. Yes, there certainly is a, a way of passing uh, property to future generations using a trust, but in doing so, you effectively give up control over the property. That's a very, very simple description, Simon. Um, would you say that's uh, roughly accurate? Yeah, I think, I think that's a fair... You, with any of these type of questions, it's always difficult to get a generic answer that fits everyone. So, no, I think that, that's pretty good. I, I think let's see... How, before we give an answer in terms of rating for this answer, uh, let's go over to Simon Hodgson to see how he slopes off. <laughs> Again, a bit like Tim said, it's an incredibly complex we go. Uh, subject matter and, and there are all sorts of forms of trust. Um, so it's possible to get funding for some trust types and structures. However, those trust types and structures might not necessarily be the full tax efficient structure that you're looking to, to uh, put into place. Um, there are potentially some ways around that in terms of, of, of the track structure being set up um, in, in a way that, that you've fixed for a long term on the mortgage. You can then change your tax structure in a way that is, is a little more efficient. However, you really, really, must, and this is not tax advice, you've got to ch check the T's and C's of your mortgage agreement because signing away the beneficial interest is something that is written into most mortgages and, and most efficient tax structures with uh, trust do require you to sign away beneficial interest. Um, so I think it, whilst not trying to slope away, Simon, um, it's a very hard one to answer correctly in this, this broad scope. Um, yeah, I, I would suggest if we've got people who are looking to do that kind of thing, it's probably going to involve uh, myself, you, Simon and Tim, on a three-way conversation to put the, the correct structure in place. It's doable. Clearly yeah. doable. I mean, one of the things I, I always talk about when people ask this question, uh, my, my final closing point is make sure you speak to your mortgage broker, make sure you speak to your solicitor. And, and I say that on every single email that I send out because it's one thing to be tax efficient, but you may be tax efficient, but you can't get a mortgage. And you may be tax efficient, but you, you could scupper your inheritance legacy planning. So you have to be very careful with that. And back to what Tim was saying about uh, trusts and using those. Trusts are very expensive that to maintain, never mind set up. And um, you, you end up having a tax return for the trust, which has to pay the highest rate if you're using discretionary trust. Um, and then someone else has to do a tax return to reclaim the, the tax back. And you may have a 10 year charge as well. So you might want to be handing your properties over, but you can easily do that using a trust somewhere down the line, using a better will structure, because it'd be interesting on the panel members. And I'm just asking the panel members, how many of you have got, and don't answer this now, maybe when we come on to your next bit, but do you have a will and do you have a power of attorney in place? Yes. Because a lot of what people should be answering that question is those two incre yes. key ingredients. So it's good to hear, panel, but how many of you listening tonight haven't got those? And you do need to reach out to Tim to get those things in place. Whether a trust is right, you could use a limited company, you could use growth shares. Um, interesting enough, coming on to, on to one thing about this, Simon Hodgson, this is... Um, is limited companies, we always say you can create a family limited company, an FLC for anyone who loves acronyms. Um, and this family limited company can use growth shares. It can put your child who doesn't receive dividends yet, but they can get growth shares, so freezer shares of the growth of the company later on in life. But we are now getting a lot of noise from mortgage lenders are saying, well, we don't want anyone else being on the uh, shareholders list of a limited company. So are you seeing that a lot more now? Because we're putting in tax efficient structures, but we're seeing that lenders don't like them. 
that's that's interesting. Okay, for the bulk of lending in the marketplace, uh, as long as shareholders are deemed to have less than a majority share, so generally less than 25% shareholding, they shouldn't then form part of the mortgage application. Now, there are a few uh, lenders that, that will ask the, the minority shareholders to be um, part of the application. So as long as, as long as you're upfront about who the shareholders are, what the limited company is, what, what you're looking to maintain and, or, and achieve with that vehicle, um, then it shouldn't be too difficult to find a lender that will do the right thing. However, yeah, if you've got someone who's making changes and hasn't told their mortgage lender, then yeah, you're going to run into a few challenges. <laughs>